you get when you mash up skate and super hot? The answer is Roller Drone, the newest shooter that combines skating combos with some serious ass kicking, all wrapped up in a stylish package. But don't let the soothing color palette fool you. This is a challenging game that demands mastery, and we here at X-Play are up for the challenge. From the same developers that brought you Oli Oli World, Roll 7's latest title is a roller skating bloodbath. The love child of Tony Hawk Pro Skater and a bullet hell game, Roller Drome stars Kara Hassan in the 2030 Roller Drome Championship as she shreds, shoots, and slays her way to the top. Hello. As the only surviving member of the G4 Roller Drome experiment, it's my pleasure to bring you this review. Firstly, we reviewed Roller Drome on PC through Steam with an Xbox controller. The footage captured for this review is my playthrough and any promotional shots. Now with that out of the way, let's get, let's get in. Ow! I'm okay. It's fine. Revealed at Sony's State of Play, Roller Drome was a mysterious, eye-catching action title. Built on the movement mechanics and fluidity of famous titles like Tony Hawk Pro Skater, the game's core principle is to survive the 10 arenas and two boss battles to be crowned the 2030 Roller Drome Champion. I'd like to note that it's much easier to be crowned Roller Drome Champion in-game than in real life. I would know. Team? I've attempted to assemble the best of the best. You, you admittedly are not quite it, but you have what the others don't. Nothing to lose. I'd like to not die. Noted. Wait, we could die? I've issued you standard issue IRF firearms. Now with these bad boys, we can give you ammo based on trick performance. Not that kind of trick. Seriously, we could Die. House players will be armed and attempt to eliminate you and your job, defeat all house players, maximize your score by performing tricks, and uh, live. Yes, Jake. So this is like a cross between the 1970s cult classic hit film Rollerball and um, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, except we're all gladiators on roller skates with guns. Yeah, uh, pretty much. That's exactly right. Oh, and uh, spider tanks. Excuse me? Spider what? What? In hindsight, I should have seen that coming. Anyway, there are 27 total tricks to choose from between various grabs and grinds that you activate with directional inputs and either left or top buttons. Tricks that require more inputs will of course be worth more points. Likewise, tricks done for the first time in your run will be worth more than repeat button mashing. You do tricks not just to earn points, but to also acquire ammo that you use to dispatch one of six various house player types. Over the course of the season, you'll unlock different guns that you can use to combo and best certain enemy types. For example, these shield units can be staggered with a well-placed shotgun slug before being burnt down via the dual pistols. Enemies will spawn in waves at set locations and use different projectile types and timings. The color design in-game cues players to time or roll to activate a perfect dodge, which gives ammo as well as allows the player to trigger a super reflex, a slow-mo feature activated with the left trigger that will also do more damage to house players. What this all comes down to is this. Where Tony Hawk Pro Skater was about chaining together wicked combos and grinds to stack combos, Roller Drome is about picking your line through the battlefield and using tricks as the cherry on top of your absolute ass kicking. It's actually much different than Tony Hawk with far more input control and mechanical intensity. That said, the game does come with different assist features that enable things like unlimited ammo, invulnerability, and customizable options for control layouts, be that on a keyboard or gamepad. So if you do want to experience the sheer zen this explosive game can bring without, I don't know, dying a million times like me, that's available at the loss of leaderboard eligibility. If you do hope to crack the leaderboard, combos are everything, and they stack not based on the number of tricks you manage, but by slaying house players. And there's a pressure to keep the blood raining down, as your combo meter will slowly drain if you're not hitting or killing. Each arena will also have combo tokens scattered throughout the run that will also instantly stack your combo meter. So with the basic mechanics out of the way, let's get to the difficulty. This game is challenging, and it will push and reward you for mastery. The 10 arenas are segmented by groups, quarters, semis, and finals, and all come with their own unique gameplay challenges. 
besting top scores, completing levels with only using a grenade launcher, or showcasing specific tricks will all tick these 10 challenges off. This is important because arenas are not only gated by clearing the tournament stage before them, but by having a certain number of challenges completed. Roller Drome demands multiple runs and muscle memory for true mastery. And it can be absolutely brutal until you find your groove or crack a level. So to help you lift the Roller Drome Cup, I've devised some tips and tricks in a little segment I'd like to call Get Good. Number one, and the most obvious, plan your route. Take a run where the first thing you do is understand how the arena works. Ignore those house players and practice timing your aerials, wall rides, and grinds to reach all the locations of the level so you're not scrambling to launch yourself from one vert to another while your 23x combo slips away because you simply can't reach your opponent on a platform. Number two, use the dodge mechanic to change direction quickly and often. Dodge isn't just about lining up the perfect reflex kill, but is more important in correcting bad lines to the arena and getting you back on track in a timely manner. You'll often find yourself racing towards last enemy before your combo slips away and fighting the camera direction more than the house player. A quick dodge to launch Kara in the right direction will save you so much time. And much like how directional changing with dodge is important, for tip number three, changing direction with grinds. Certain parts of arenas are really only accessible via grinding, but the most important part of the mechanic is that as you come down from your aerials, you can hit the grind button and magnetically stick to a pole and race off in that direction. Grinding is also nice because it allows you to passively acquire ammo a bit slower as you zip along, making you into a killer monorail. Okay, this next one seems simple, but I found it was really the gatekeeper to my own demise. To get more air off ramps, you hold down A and then release just as you go off the jump. The issue is, is that there are countless enemies, namely snipers, who will disrupt this launch by forcing you to dodge their incoming attacks. The process of taking your finger off A as you lined up to the launch to hit B messes everything up. Initially, I was holding A for too long in preparation for the jump, running into this problem at the most inconvenient times. So the tip. Either rebind the dodge key to something like the left bumper so you never have to take your hand off A, or train yourself in the habit of not holding A till the last possible second. The more leeway you give yourself in having that thumb free to dodge, the smoother things will go. And finally, and probably the most important tip, number five. Weave grunts between tougher kills. Different house players will require different combinations of gunplay to take down to keep the combos rolling, so it needs to be done in a timely manner. Outside the initial grunts and snipers, you won't find enemies that you can just burn down with your dual pistols in a single clip. So you'll constantly be looking for tricks to get ammo back and finish them off. Consider keeping grunts alive between working the stronger house players down to reliably refresh your combo cooldown without feeling stressed to take down the tougher opponents in time. IRF agents hate these five simple tricks that will skyrocket you to the top of the leaderboard, but that's understandable, as IRF agents seem to really hate everything. Clearly inspired by the 1970s novel and movie and the less good but still totally watchable remake, Rollerball, Rollerdrome narratively explores the monetization and sensationalism of violence. The blood sport is made more dangerous to produce more money, and the real enemies are the capitalistic shitbags holding the bag. And that's not me just inserting politics into a video game, that's just, that's just factually clear. Visually, the game is simple but stunning in its ability to convey all the necessary information despite the chaos around you. Each enemy type has its own designated and easy to read color, so no hips feel cheap or unfair. Except for you. F you. And while the difficulty curve does escalate pretty rapidly, again, the game rewards you for trying again with the challenge and leaderboard system. And once you've beaten it the first time, be prepared for the post-campaign content out for blood. Because, surprise, f that was child's play. Welcome to the real world. Out for Blood follows Kara Hassan on her second year in the Roller Drum Championship, where the ante has been raised. Now, all enemy types spawn every arena. They hit harder, faster, and generally way more chaotic. It's the hardcore mode of the game, and that first year in the championship was just the tutorial. If you're a fan of fast-paced, mechanically intensive action titles, then Roller Drum is the perfect game for you iconic soundtrack and simple story, the gameplay is addictive and rewarding, which is why we're giving Roller Drone a four out of five. Okay, done. Nice. Oh, hey, does uh, anyone think they can drive me to the hospital? The f do you think, Frost?